Hello YouTube, Downtown Prepper here, and today I'll be doing a quick comparison on two kukri machetes, specifically the Cold Steel kukri and the K-Bar kukri machete. Um, moving right into it, costs. The Cold Steel will run you anywhere from 18 to high 20s. Um, I paid in the um, high range of that, I uh, paid about 25 bucks for it at Cabela's, having received a gift card. K-Bar will run you anywhere from um, low 40s to high 50s. I paid about 45 bucks for it on Amazon. Um, packaging, the Cold Seal Kukri came in a basically a plastic bag, um, already in the sheath. Uh, with and the plastic bag was sealed with a folded over piece of cardboard stapled at the top Just like a bag of candy The K-Bar came in a box. Everything was individually uh, bagged the blade was um, inside of a cardboard a cardboard uh, case and It was surrounded by a bubble wrap. So it was definitely prettier packaging, but That's long and gone and we pay for the blade. So moving right into it sheath the K-Bar has a leather sheath on one side, the sewn on and riveted, has a leather uh, loop that swivels, which from experience is great uh, for allowing uh, natural mobility when um, attached to your belt loop, if this is attached to say your cargo pocket. Um, it allows for your leg to swing pretty naturally. The back of it feels like some kind of a nylon material. Uh, sewn, uh, it's plastic, feels like plastic surrounded by nylon. Leather uh, straps. Only one is needed to remove the actual blade has the loop at the front to again say attach to your leg if you wanted to um, whatever uh, it has a hole for allow f to put a strap on it which is always a good idea highly recommended did not come with a strap however um, the handle is made out of a uh, Creton G material, apparently, is what they call it. And it's ribbed, for, it allows for a better grip, for sure. And one thing I loved about it is that it's flared, which obviously helps your prevent your hand from sliding forward, and it's hooked at the bottom. Really holds your hand in really well. You put a strap around your wrist, and this thing isn't going anywhere. One thing about kukris is when you strike, when you actually strike um, at your intended target, if you get a bad angle, it's really easy for the blade to pop. Almost want to pop out of your hands. So definitely having something around your wrist is highly recommended. Um, moving right into the blade. Again, only one is needed to remove it. It's very sharp out of the box. Very sharp, straight, not jagged at all. The blade itself is 11 and a half inches. And total length is 17 inches. So it's definitely a, a nice, long size blade. It's on the shorter end of the Kukri machetes and obviously it's uh, shorter than the original Kukri um, which some would argue is not a machete but uh, it's also a lot thinner than the original machete uh, than the original Kukri, excuse me, at 1 16th of an inch or about four and a half millimeters. You can tell the blade's very straight very nice looking blade, 20 degree angle, uh, 1085 carbon steel. It's definitely a strong, strong blade. Um, 
Okay. Pretty much covers the cave art again. Uh, overall impressions is it's very well made. Very well made. So we'll go ahead and put this back in the sheath. Put it off to the side. And let's take a look at the cold steel. Obviously, uh, a little bit cheaper machete, cheaper sheath. It's made out of a what they call a Corex material, which is basically a nylon-like material. You tell here, and a strap of the Corex lines is aligned all the way at the bottom and is sewn on and riveted to prevent the blade from falling out. It's a loop, a uh, Corex loop, um, sewn on, has the plastic caps at the front, um, riveted. I'll show you here, it's pretty it's thin, thinner plastic. Um, it's definitely a thinner sheath in comparison. to the K-Bar. Give you a quick side to side. Get this focus real quick. Give you the quick side to side real quick. Now, again, only one is needed to be unlatched in order to slide the machete out. Okay. Moving right into the cold steel, it's a 13 inch blade. It's 18 inches overall. It's made out of a 1055 carbon steel blade. At its widest point, it's about three inches I measured earlier. It's made out of this uh, PVC uh, handle, and let me try to get it to focus here. And it's made out of a, it, the candle is a little bit thinner than the K-Bars. It definitely does not have that flare on there. And um, the hooks, let me give you the quick side by side and I have to be worried about getting cut with it. Um, The K-Bar grips obviously are a little bit uh, thicker. Um, like I said, more of a flare. Has a little bit more of a hook. So there you go. Um, I did a review on the specifics of this coal seal. Uh, it was more of an opinion review. And there's a link on that if you want to take a look at it. But it goes over what I think about the blade and some of the flaws that I saw with it. Um, but this uh, this is just a facts review and so moving right back into it, it has what's called a uh, black baked on anti-rust matte finish and um, these coal steel is not known for sending out sharp machetes um, and this is no exception. Um, the blade is not finished, so it would need to be sharpened. Again, it's a $20 difference between the two. Okay, I've laid the two machetes out to give you a quick view uh, as I give you my final opinion. Um, so what do I think? For, this is a 20, like again, there's a $20 price difference between the two. Now, um, Cold Steel is known for uh, having machetes that last a long time. Um, so if you only have $20 to spend, I mean, you know, why not? It, it, I mean, again, if you, only, if you literally can only uh, afford the $18 machete off of Amazon, you can only afford one, don't get a cheap off-brand. you be probably better off going with the Cold Steel. Um, regardless of the fact that it doesn't come sharp, I mean, you can sharpen it if you take your time. Your own time is free, technically. Um, spare time, at least. So, I mean, it's definitely a viable option. 
One, uh, one thing I did not cover is weight. Um, this cold steel weighs a pound compared to 1.7 pounds. So, I mean, significantly lighter. For the weight conscious hiker, it's definitely a viable option. The only thing that really put me off was the fact that that's going on on the blade at the thinnest part of the blade and it almost looks like there might be some pitting in there i don't know that's what really put me off from taking it on a upcoming hike that me and a buddy are going on it's nothing crazy extreme but it will be a cold weather hike uh lows into the teens possibly a wind chills into you know single digits um and quite, quite frankly, I didn't trust my life to that machete. I just could not take it and count on it not breaking right there. I could just be being paranoid. I'm not a you know metal expert, so um, I just wasn't going to take any chances. I purchased another K-Bar, which I know, I mean, I, from past experience, works. Sharp as heck, right out of the box. And like I said, it just works. Um, one uh, other thing is this uh, faux um, double blade here. I mean, it's just overall, this, this K bar looks nicer. There was a lot more uh, metal work involved in making this K bar. The sheath, also nicer. Really quickly, this is what uh, my old K-Bar sheath looks like. Lost the machete because I let my sister borrow it like an idiot. Never got it back. Uh, moving on. Um, this was about five hikes in um, different types of conditions from humid, rainy, cold, snowy, cold, wet, um, hot. You know, every type of condition um, pretty much you can experience in the Midwest. Uh, we took it, I took it on a few um, 15 plus mile hikes in the Appalachian Mountains. So, I mean, definitely not the craziest terrain, but definitely not a walk in the park either. So, give you a quick look at how it held up. I mean, wasn't crazy about taking good care of it. Again, it was on the side of my hip. So everything I ran across, it hit, you know, but leather, although stripped, held up. Rivets still on tight. A little bit of fraying down at the bottom. But the stitching still good. Leather still good. All the so uh, all the sewing still good. So I mean, you know, it was about a year and a half and pretty decent terrain. So again, I don't know. If you had the extra twenty dollars I don't know why you wouldn't get the K-Bar. Again, these are two machetes for under $50. They're both what I would consider on the lower end, cost-wise. But um, the difference between these two are huge, in my opinion. Quality-wise, definitely goes to the K-Bar. I hope this uh, helps some people out. Again, this is just my opinion. Um, Please remember to like if you enjoyed. Uh, please feel free to subscribe if you would like to see more videos. Uh, until next time, this has been Downtown Prepper. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.